Welcome back to the 2023 Open at Austin, presented by Lone Star Disc at Harvey Pennock Golf Campus. I'm Andrew Fish, joined by Nathan Queen. What a fun event it's been so far. A uh, bit of a different scoring style today. A lot less red on the card. Maybe not as many birdies as you would expect with such low wind, uh, but still quite a few birdies on the card. So some clean golf going on. And I feel like this back nine's pretty scorable. Yeah, absolutely. This is the round two MPO chase card, and we are on the back nine. Uh, there's been a huge string of par threes as part of this course design, and uh, that means lots of two opportunities can move you up the leaderboard in a hurry, as we see a couple folks at 10, and then uh, Heimberg on our card at eight in third place. Yeah, and moving into hole 10, 398 foot par three, Still in that stretch of par seven par threes that we have here. If you can get a right-handed backhand hyzer out to skip at least halfway across that green already, then that should skip you up towards the pin. Uh, but there is OB on the left side as well, so you can't skip too far. Remember taking a big wide hyzer. I kind of like this to take the green out of play if you can do it. Even at 398 feet uh, you do have to throw it pretty wide to avoid the large trees that define the inbounds area yeah and there's no way my disc would go far enough if I threw it that high but Calvin <laughs> up there at least inside circle two possibly in circle one temporarily in the stratosphere while getting there eagle a little lower line gets himself into circle one You see the effort from Bell, like full speed run up. Not usually seeing that out of him. He's gonna come up a little short, probably in circle two. Ezra seems to be looking up there where Calvin was looking at. Not quite as high, still pretty far up there. its way off the green. And I was observing this basket being much harder to reach than it was in round one with a tailwind. Uh, just that neutral wind and maybe players expecting the same kind of reaction. Oh, and Matt Bell again, right on the basket. He's had a couple of them hit already and not quite stay in for him. Ezra, low left corner pocket, does a full lap around the bottom of the basket. Well done, gets his bird. And the eagle, man on a mission now. Three down in the last four holes to get him to two under par for the round. Uh, starting to make a move after a bit of a slow start. Yeah, no time like the present. Matt, full routine at one foot. Nicely done. Good focus. Hole 11. Bunch of gap options. There's a primary forehand gap off to the left, and then a series of backhands to the right, depending on what the wind is doing. You can either see uh, that mid play off to the right, or a little more of a driver play with the forehand. Uh, the key is to line yourself up with the basket and don't push it too far just about like this yeah I guess <laughs> that's what you're into let's take a look at that again that is what I like that soft little stand-up shot with the mid-range and just places it perfectly distance control on point As we're gonna swing a forehand hyzer out, and boy howdy, that looked great, but find some uh, invisible fingers. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. Calvin's disc pretty much in the same spot, maybe four inches lower. Doesn't catch those branches, and he's gonna be tapping in another birdie. Not a whole lot of danger on this hole. 
the danger is all natural, really. Yeah, and nobody really in too much natural danger as Matt Bell is just catching all kinds of metal here. We've seen several of his putts come up low this round, and uh, Matt noted to me that he's coming off an injury. He had a little bit of a side issue most of last year, and uh, only really started playing rounds just before Vegas. And he said he felt like his legs just weren't under him as much as he wants today. And turkey for Eagle, another birdie for Calvin moves us into hole 12 660 foot par 4 again you've got a placement shot here you've got a little peanut out of bounds off to the left of where the drone's at now that's about 360 feet or so um, if you get too aggressive and turn it over you're going to be OB in the woods on the right lots of space on the left but then you bring more trees into play on your upshot Eagle going back to the backhand mid, and this can certainly work. Gets a lot of glide. And finds himself in a safe uh, little tree well. So possibly some weird footing, but definitely throwable from there. From what we've seen so far, it seems like it's better to be inside those than just outside. <laughs> Heimberg hugs the inside too much. He kind of did the same thing yesterday, fortunate to stay safe, uh, but that's going to leave him with a challenging angle. Has to swing it way left of the green in order to access. I haven't seen many players go with the forehand, uh, but puts himself in a pretty good spot. I'm a fan. And I see a wide rim driver in Matt's hand. This is an aggressive play. But if it gets him lots of distance to make the upshot easier, why not? Yeah, and he's got it just right of that peanut. Calvin probably needs to lay up here. But that does not look like a layup shot. Nope, and uh, he buzzes the, t the tower of the spotter. The spotter responds with the red flag. So I see a bogey in Calvin's future. And Ezra trying to play the flex, but test that left side out of bounds. The disc just didn't have enough fight in it. And Eagle doesn't look to be too hindered by those bricks or whatever you want to say they are around that tree. Gets up inside the circle with another straight mid-range shot. Yeah, it's a, quite the luxury to be able to throw a one-step 330 on a rope with a mid. Yeah, which he seems to have done on the last five or six holes. He's just <laughs> went down to mid-range and is just ripping on him. This is a little ambitious as a bid. Since there is some out-of-bounds behind this, but able to nestle. I love it when you see that little smile on Matt's face right when he's about to putt. It usually means it's about to go in. Yeah, he knows and that means you know. Four in a row. Yeah, Count don't it. look now. This whole playing a good bit easier today. 37% Cardi to Birdie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm Ezra Aderhold. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Ezra underscore Aderhold. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, just uh, kind of my name. I make some, you know, practice round videos, doubles, battles, things like that. Um, and then I want to thank my sponsors, Dishcraft, Squatch, Disc Golf, Bags, and then OTBDiscs.com as well. Thanks. Drama all the way to the final hole. Kristen to win the Waco Annual Charity Open. She's done it! 
Kristen Tatar. Hole 13, 352 feet, playing uphill, probably uh, an effective 400, 420 or so. There is out of bounds to the right and a golf green that you do have to cross, and everything slopes away to the left side and uh, even beyond the basket. Roller is a play, backhand is a play, forehand is a play. This is very much dealer's choice. Yeah, it looks like Eagle's trying to line up the roller here. This looks like it's going to turn really quickly, though. Yeah. Does. Wow. Such a flippy disc that it just burned to the right immediately. Oh, this is trouble. Yeah, I wonder if that was a slip on the tee or what exactly happened there, but never came out clean. Might have a long look to save a par from down there, but it'll be difficult. Meter hold with the flat release. The disc drifts. Does get him into circle two. You got to think. Uh, you got to think. Matt was trying to play more of a force over rather than the pure uh, flat to Heiser. And Calvin right. this looks like an eagle to me, or something very similar. That's the same thing he did yesterday. Threw it into the out of bounds and came out looking rosy. Yeah, he liked the line yesterday. Figured he'd take it again. The half layup, half run by Bell. And this is Ezra for his birdie. Just putting himself in range, huh? Yeah, keeping it clean, putting himself in range. He's made a couple of those steppers now in the last few holes. And he's moved himself back inside that top ten. Eagle for the par save. He'll be looking to uh, bounce back on this hole and grab the birdie tomorrow. Never, never really feels good to take a bogey. Uh, but this is one of the ones you feel like you have to get at least a par on. Moving into hole 14, 300 foot wide open. Par three, you've got OB right, OB long, OB left. The basket kind of sits on a peninsula. The grass is pretty grabby around the basket, so if you get a good spike, you're not really going to skip too much from either direction that you decide to come in on. Yeah, we're probably going to see a heavy reliance on stability, and if you're looking for something to follow, it seems like Ezra has a good option for you. Calvin going to try to get in line here. Overstable approach disc. <laughs> Probably a Toro there. I think I think that might have been his Firebird. He threw that several times yesterday. Okay. Eagle is going to go mid, and this seems like it's got a lot of air under it, but slow enough to just drop. Looks like there may be just a slight left to right wind helping drop these discs down. Safe place to be is certainly on the flat with the basket. You don't really want to be testing the headwind into an elevated basket because at the bottom of the slope there is out of bounds too. And then you're putting three times your head height if you're down there. I imagine the rest of the card going to clean up with no difficulty at all. Yeah, what you want to do on this hole, it was the second easiest par three. 61% of the field taking a birdie. Uh, just like our whole card here, going to card the diamond frame. 
Ezra's moved to some gloves now. Must be cooling off. It definitely was. Uh, overcast skies, 55 or so, and uh, pretty windy. Makes this exposure uh, feel chilly. Hole 15, 425 feet, downhill par 3. The golf green is uh, certainly the first thing to avoid. There's a cluster of trees around the basket and then out of bounds, not more than 25 feet long at the closest point. Flex forehand has been a pretty popular play to be running alongside the out of bounds instead of into it. You could also do kind of a straight mid or putter play at the basket or a wide hyzer. Ezra coming up a little bit short, but a fancy roll here. Going to get him just outside circle one, see if he's got that step putt he's been liking. Heimberg with a low driven shot. I think that's the action you're looking for. You want to kind of get a hyzer skip off of that knoll. But he, he might have rolled as far as he threw it. <laughs> yeah, he's rolled to a similar spot that Ezra <laughs> was in. Getting some nice little trickles on this hole so far. Eagle All says, right. I've got a line for you. <laughs> well, there you go. Still wanting to throw hard, he just throws it higher and farther to the right. Going to be inside the circle looking at a pretty easy birdie putt. Matt Bell liked it. Going to try the same. Yeah, try to get the crash shot here. He's got to, got to check up and does. I think for Bell to execute that shot with his power level, he needs the disc over on Anheuser a little while longer. Good height on that one. Not quite able to connect this time though. Calvin Heimberg able to get his turkey. Puts him seven under through the round and in a tie for second right now. Body language there was a real fast walk up to the basket. Uh, Calvin looks pretty focused. And has moved into tie for second. Holy cow, where did that come from? Oh no, maybe a little bit quick on that setup. Um, still a pretty good putt though, slightly right. Five hundred and fifteen foot par four, but OB the entire way between you and the basket. Uh, if you don't have enough power to reach it with the low winds today, you're going to throw off to the right side and have a fairly routine upshot. Uh, but I imagine, I don't know if, if Matt will be able to go for this one or not, but I see three go for it's here trying to get the eagle. Calvin did card that eagle in round one, as we saw. This time, I'm going to push out towards circle two. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, just has some work left to do if he wants another two. I feel like eagle's nice and warmed up for this shot. He's really been disking down and throwing hard, so not a new feel for him to try to reach this one. He's already been throwing pretty hard today. And there you go. Thro throws it right up there just outside the bullseye. Yeah, that's what you need. And look at the difference in how Calvin threw his shot. Just like flat and powered with an overstable dip. Eagle went back to that hyzer flip to stand up. Uh, just a reflection of what their natural throwing angle is. 
Matt with a good layup to the right side. That'll leave him another forehand into the green, I imagine. And Ezra... Yeah. Didn't look like he was really feeling that eagle run there. Just kind of went for the distance. Didn't really care if it stood up, which is perfectly fine. Uh, gotta get the birdie on this one. You definitely don't want to go OB and have to deal with trying to save a par on the easiest hole on the course. Ezra with a good layup. That might have been half a bid. Make your uh, top 10 percentile of length the one that could be chain high. Oh, Calvin, just a little bit high. Solid bid from that far away though. Eagle able to connect. All of a sudden he is 12 down. Gonna be in a tie with Calvin once Calvin taps in his birdie. Yeah, they sure came in bunches. Yeah, where did Eagle come from, you know? He just, <laughs> here he is. I noted on hole five that he was one up at that point, and that continued through hole six. And now, all of a sudden, he's eight for the round. Yeah, along with Calvin. 80, speaking of eight, 80% of the field took the birdie on that one with another 10% taking Eagle. Holy cow. Hole 17, this is not quite the open at Austin. Uh, we're gonna have to play a slow wood shot to a landing zone and then a very, very specific tunnel to get to this basket. At 436 feet, it's still gonna play as a very challenging par four. Expect to see some forehands, perhaps uh, some other creative shots as we get further down the hole. An eagle, reticent to throw that forehand, but gonna bust it out here at slower speed. And his power just makes it hard for him to slow it down enough. He does get a good tap to the fairway, though. And as you were saying, this hole does play difficult. It's the second hardest hole on the course and the first hole that we've seen play over par on the back nine. Heimberg, good forehand shot. Puts himself in the middle of the fairway. That's, uh, that's pretty much position A, about all you could ask for from this tee. Matt tries to follow it, but more air under that under than Calvin's had had. Really difficult to slow yourself down this much. This is such a short shot to make this corner. And you kind of have a gap to hit too. That has too much speed on it. Oh, but does get a nice little kick down. See some awkward stances here. And that's no give me up and down from there where Eagle's at either. Yeah, the left side of this tunnel is more favorable than the right for getting up and down. But I think the biggest key is you have to get, you know, some penetration on your second shot to have a, a reasonable chance of the up and down. And these guys are just not having fun trying to hit this gap. Calvin trying to save the group. Also... Not able to hit this second gap. Nathan, you're a North Carolina woodsman. I gotta think. Uh, gotta think this is about the sixth hardest hole you'd play on some courses, some weekends, huh? Oh yeah, this is like a <laughs> standard, standard par four right here. This isn't <laughs> isn't too yeah. much out of the ordinary. But once you've been throwing all these uh, these big open shots, this is such a curveball. Matt's gonna be putting long for his. Wow, for his four attempt. Oh, man. We talked about in the first round, kind of Paul had a lot of those what-ifs. They would have gone in. Matt Bell, so many putts are so close to going in right now. He's still three under par. And if all those putts that hit metal, or just half of them stayed, he would be about six or so. Seems like you want his mid-round snack to be candy and nuts then. Calvin for the comebacker. This is for his par.
Matt Bell here. Just want to thank you for tuning in to Gatekeeper and a big shout out to my sponsors, Thought Space Athletics, EV7, and Eric versus Cancer. If you want to check out my social media, Instagram, it's Matt Bell City. And I also have a website, mattbelldiscgolf.com. I'll be doing a restock there soon. If you want to support the tour, check me out there. Only seven players. 436 foot par four only seven players got the birdie brings us into from the second hardest hole on the course to the hardest hole on the course hole 18 800 foot par four got to carry some ob on the original tee shot not too much danger though you want to drift left to avoid the ob ball golf green then you've got this tight approach ob sidewalk left ob rough on the right sloping that way uh what a way to finish Pretty close to a full swing from Eagle. Gonna take one little jump off the green. And that should leave a straight shot in. The green is 455 feet away from the tee pad. Just to give you guys some reference to how far Eagle just smashed that disc. Yeah, that, that's important context. Because as this hole is playing uphill at 800, the closer your approach into the green the better like I, I know that sounds very reductive but it's such a small specific and sloped landing zone that you need to be able to control the shot rather than powering it yes if you can get far enough to not throw a high speed driver or even not throw a fairway the, the slower speeds you can throw the better for approaching this green and you gotta imagine that as tight as this field has been we're going to see some wild stroke swings as players are coming down the stretch on 17 and 18 on Championship Sunday. Uh, definitely, going to, definitely going to look forward to our gatekeeper chase card to be in the mix at that point. Matt going to the salt. This has been one of his main distance drivers. Plays the turnover to try to drift. Oh, come on, hold it. Oh. And good hustle from the spotter. You see him keeping a close eye on that disc as it was tracking into the green. Uh, thank you so much to all the hard workers out here. Uh, seemed like there were spotters on every hole. Good availability of water. Um, thanks to the Open at Austin crew for making it possible. And a good branch drop there from Calvin. Looks like he's going to be right around Circle's Edge. Maybe have a look and... Nice ground play there. Wasn't sure if that was going to get the skip or not, uh, but fantastic forehand shot from Ezra there. Yeah, clinical work right there to play the sidewalk and get the forehand. Eagle able to throw the mid up. Again, what a luxury. And Matt Bell looking for some Matt Bell magic. Gave it a good bid. Gonna have to settle for the bogey on the last hole. Uh, which still gains strokes on a lot of people. As 45% of the field taking bogey or above on the final hole of the course today. Eagle McMahon though wants nothing to do with that. Gonna finish with a birdie and nine down on the round through the last 10 holes. Aderhold brings it back as well. A solid six down today. That'll leave him tied for 10th. to finish uh, good round for him like you said a little bit of what ifs but uh you know one more round to go a lot of a lot of ground to to make up eagle and calvin they are going to move on to the lead card we're sorry to see them go but uh grateful that we got to see them in round two uh, solid rounds for ezra and matt and uh you see it's a very packed field nathan 
Absolutely. And tomorrow we're going to have another great card. Paul McBeth, Gannon Burr, Huna Heinanen. And Mason Marchbanks. Mason Marchbanks. Yeah, Mason Marchbanks, a Texas local. Some old friends, some some new faces. Uh, for Nathan Queen, I'm Andrew Fish. We'll see you guys out there. <laughs>